If you've been waiting for an affordable, high-speed, multicolored 3D printer, the FlashForge 85X might just be the one to beat. With its Core XY motion system capable of blazing 600mm per second prints, and a brand new intelligent filament system that lets you print in up to four colors without bulky external hardware, this machine promises a lot for under 400 US dollars. But is it really as good as it sounds? Or are there some trade-offs that you'll want to know about before buying? Stick around, because in this review, I'll put the 85X through real tests, show you where it shines, where it struggles, and whether it deserves a spot on your workbench. Before we begin, this 85X was provided for me to review by FlashForge. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this printer for the last month. My videos do have affiliate links in the description, so if you're interested in anything you see in my videos, from printers, filament, or accessories, you can use those links to help support our channel. We appreciate it. The FlashForge 85X is a filament-based Core XY 3D printer. The big feature of the 85X is FlashForge's new Intelligent Filament System, or IFS. This system allows for smart, multicolored 3D printing, allowing up to four colors in the same prints. There are a few parts that work together for the IFS to function. The gray box is the IFS host. This is where you insert the four colors of filaments. The host contains a motor capable of feeding the filament into the hot end. There are four special spool holders on the side of the 85X. These spool holders are spring-loaded, and pull on the filament just enough to retract the filament when it's not in use. And finally, the four Bowden tubes run from the IFS host into the four-channel adapter on the hot end. The IFS enables easy four-colored printing. When the printer is finished with a color for that layer, it'll move the hot end to the front left corner. Here, it'll engage a lever that cuts the filament inside of the hot end. The pull from the spool holder will automatically retract the remaining filament, while the hot end moves to the purge chute at the back of the printer. It'll then load in the next color, purge any remaining filament of the old color, and shoot that purge blob out of the back. It'll then continue printing and switching colors as necessary. I'll go over purge amounts and show just how much filament is wasted later on in this review. But for now, know that I really like the simplicity of the intelligent filament system. No bulky external box or filament holder. It's all built neatly into the side of the printer where a single spool holder would normally go. It does a great job switching colors and makes some very beautiful four colored prints. There are two things that I noticed during my test of the IFS. The first is that I really don't like the location of the purge chute. It is directly over where the power cord connects. This makes it hard to catch the poop, at least until you print a chute or a bucket that fits over the power cord. The second issue is that the auto-retracting spool holders always keep the filament under a little bit of tension. I found that this is more likely to cause filament to crack or snap, especially filament not actively being printed. Moving back to the hot end, the 85X has a direct drive extruder with a quick change 0.4mm brass nozzle as standard. I love the easy access to the nozzle. The front cover is magnetically attached and easy to lift away, fan included. And then the nozzle is removed by unclipping two clips, and then it can be removed. FlashForge includes a 0.4mm nozzle by default, but sells additional nozzles of 0 0.25, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8mm. The hot end is rated for up to 280 degrees Celsius. There is a single cooling fan at the front, with ductwork that blows the air equally around the nozzle. The 85X is a Core XY 3D printer. Core XY printers use two stationary motors that work together with an intricate belt loop to move the hot end in the X and Y directions. Core XY printers have some unique advantages. Unlike a normal gantry, where one of the motors has to be moved with the gantry, both motors of the Core XY design are stationary. This removes weight from the gantry, making it more nimble. Since the motors are working together, they can add their torque together to enable max print speeds of up to 600 millimeters per second. It also enables insanely quick accelerations of up to 20,000 millimeters per second per second. And the 85X does not hold back. It'll gladly print at 600 millimeters per second. With very little effort, I was able to get a 16 minute speed Benchy, and I'm sure I could knock that down another minute or two with some additional tweaks. The 85X has a max print volume of 220 by 220 by 220 millimeters. The print volume is a little disappointing. 220 millimeters in the X and Y directions is pretty standard, but a max height of only 220 millimeters is a bit of a letdown. It's still fully functional, but an extra 30 or so millimeters would have helped to be able to print full size masks more easily. The bed itself is a magnetic, flexible, spring steel textured PEI build plate. It offers plenty of adhesion while printing, but parts were easy to remove afterwards with just a quick flex. The bed is supported by three pairs of bearings and threaded rods. They are all connected to a single Z-axis motor using a belt loop on the bottom. 
bottom. The bed is a load cell, which senses forces applied to the bed. This is what enables the auto bed level and auto Z nozzle offset features. It knows when the nozzle touches the bed, so it knows exactly how far to move to get the first layer just right. And I was pretty impressed by the quality of the first layer. The AD5X is a pretty quiet machine. While printing, it maxes out at about 61 decibels, averaging in the 58 to 60 decibels. On front is the 4.3 inch full color touchscreen display. This screen is nice to use, menu options are neatly laid out, and it's easy to find the setting that you want to adjust. There is a USB port on the right of the control panel. The only other I.O. is the Ethernet port around back, so you can hardwire the printer if you don't want to connect over Wi-Fi. The 85X has a number of optional accessories which I haven't tested, but are good to know about. First is a camera module, which gives the 85X the ability for real-time monitoring as well as generating time lapses. The 85X also has an enclosure kit to turn it into a fully enclosed printer. This will help reduce noise, FlashForge claims a 10 decibel reduction, and it will keep the chamber temperatures more consistent. The 85X arrives almost entirely pre-assembled. It's probably the best packaged printer that I've tested. It only took a couple of minutes to slide the control panel into place, attach the IFS host module, and slide on the four spool holders. A couple of cables later and you are ready to turn it on. One thing to note is that the spool holders are numbered, and must be installed in the correct order. Each spool holder is different, designed with the auto retraction in a different direction and for different amounts. So if you install spool holder 1 in slot 3, it won't retract correctly. Once powered on, it'll ask to connect to your Wi-Fi network and walk you through the automatic calibration process. It'll run through the automatic bed leveling routine and then run a vibration sweep to calibrate input shaping. After the calibration process, you are ready to start printing. Overall, it was about 20 minutes from unboxing until starting my first print, with most of that time used in the automatic calibration process. It was a great experience. FlashForge recommends that you use their Orca FlashForge Slicer. This is their fork of the popular Orca Slicer, and comes with a number of pre-built setting profiles for the AD5X. If you've used Orca Slicer, Bamboo Studio, or any number of Orca Slicer forks, then you'll feel right at home. The default profiles seem to be well-tuned for the printer. The speeds are a little conservative, with the high-speed PLA profiles maxing out at 300 mm per second print speeds, but you can experiment with bumping that up. Working with multiple colors is pretty simple. Unfortunately, there is no sync option to automatically pull filament types and colors that you have selected in the printer's menu into the slicer, so you'll need to manually add or remove filament. But from there, you can change different parts to be different filaments, or use the painting tool to easily color a model. And when finished, you can send the print to the 85X wirelessly. Flushing volumes are also adjustable from within the slicer, so you can optimize the amount of wasted filament between different color combinations. The only major drawback for the Orca FlashForge slicer is the lack of an estimated purge amount. It shows how much filament is used for the model and in any priming towers, but it doesn't show the amount of filament purged. This is terrible when trying to track filament usage or determine if you have enough filament left on a roll for a multicolored print. I've seen other manufacturers add in this feature to their Orca-based slicers, so I'm hoping that FlashForge will add that in soon. There is a Flash Maker mobile app for iOS and Android. This app gives you the basic functionality for remotely monitoring your printer. You can see the current job that's running on the printer, and if you have the camera attachment, you can see a live view from the printer. The Android app does not seem to send push notifications when a print completes or gets paused due to an error. You have to open up the app to check on the status. I wish I could get a push notification to alert me to an issue, but maybe that is a feature which can be added in the future. So with all of the specs out of the way, let's take a look at how well the FlashForge AD5X prints, and talk about how much filament is wasted during multicolored prints. First we have a sample print that came preloaded on the printer. This tentacle headphone holder is an interesting choice for a test print. Size-wise, it's way too small to hold most headphones, but as a print, it turned out pretty well. It printed using three colors, and with only 50 or so layers with color changes, it printed in a reasonable time of six hours. This dual-colored 3D Benchy is a good test for dual-colored prints and purge amounts. Print-wise, the Benchy looks really good. No defects on the outer hall, and bridges around the doors and windows look good. There is some stair-stepping on the yellow overhangs on the edges though. And color-wise, for the most part the colors look crisp although the yellow trim around the door might have a slight green tint to it, where maybe not all of the blue was purged out. The purge amount could stand to be bumped up 20 cubic millimeters more or so to make sure that there is no cross-contamination on the smaller yellow areas. It took 5 hours and 13 minutes to print. These Donald Duck figures printed using 4 colors, and I love the way that they turned out. This was a normal STL that I used the slicer's paint feature to color. The results are very stunning. It took 25 hours and 46 minutes to print these two statues. So let's take a look at how much filament is wasted in these multicolored prints. For each color change, the old filament is cut, and the new filament is extruded until all the old color has been purged. 
This results in a lot of wasted filament in the form of these poop blobs. For the 3D Benchy, the resulting print was 11.3 grams, and to print it, it generated 89.8 grams of poop. The sample tentacle headphone holder was better. The print weighs 67.7 grams and generated 46.4 grams of poop. And finally, we have the Donald Duck statues, which together weigh 150 grams and generated 351 grams of poop not including supports or the Prime Tower. There's a few insights to this. The 85X actually does a pretty good job at trying to minimize waste. 90 grams of waste for the 3D Benchy is on the lower end of waste amounts. The defaults for any Cubix Cobra series of printers were higher than that. For example, the Cobra S1 at launch was 183 grams of waste, double the 85X. And the Donald Duck prints show that the most efficient way to use filament is to pack the build plate full of the same prints. Since the amount of poop only depends on the number of color changes in each layer, the same amount of purge would happen whether you are printing one of an object or ten of them. So pack that plate. Turning back to print quality, this single color Desert Kiss Dice Tower turned out excellent. Overhangs are crisp, and it is just a nice high quality result from the 85X. Same with this flexible snake printed in rainbow colored filament. There is no stringing between any of the scales, and each individual segment stuck to the print bed perfectly, and yet was easy to remove afterwards. I love this snake. There was no speed test 3D Benchy provided with the printer. I was able to adjust the settings within the slicer to run at the max 600 mm per second speeds and 20,000 mm per second per second acceleration and I got a 3D Benchy down to about 16 minutes. It's not the prettiest Benchy, but it's not supposed to be. This isn't an optimized setting, where tractions are completely disabled and speeds on everything cranked up to the max. But the 85X was able to handle running at those speeds, although I wouldn't recommend it. I'd stick to the Slicer's profile's defaults of around 300mm per second for the best balance of speed and quality. Unfortunately, the 85X's 220mm tall print volume meant that I couldn't print my normal full-sized Captain America bust. I had to scale it down. The results are still pretty good, but not perfect. You can see a bit of ringing around the hard edges on the back. The input shaping wasn't able to entirely remove those artifacts, but they are subtle, only visible in just the right light. This model also had another issue. The first time I printed it, I came back to the 85X to find a tangled roll of filament on the ground. The spool had fallen off of slot 2 and caused a tangle that the printer detected and paused. Thinking that it was a fluke, I fixed the roll and restarted the prints. And would you know it, it happened again. The exact same issue. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording either of those times. So I set up my cameras, print it again, and no issue the third time. I tried to reproduce it by switching to a different filament slot and printed it again, and no issues the fourth time either. Since then, I've printed another 100 hours on most of the four filament holders, and I haven't had this issue happen again, so I'm chalking it up to a fluke on this purple roll of filament. Maybe there was an existing tangle that I fixed after the second failure. Who knows? If you've had spools fall off the spool holders, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know if it's a filament compatibility issue or a spool holder issue, etc. Finally, the 85X works surprisingly well with flexible filaments like TPU. This is a relatively hard TPU 90A, but it printed perfectly on the 85X. And the multi-material prints also worked out well with the IFS. It switched between TPU and PLA with no problems. In conclusion, the 85X is an amazing printer with great multicolor capabilities. It is a very compact unit, fitting the four spool holders neatly on the side of the machine. The Core XY design makes it very quick, allowing print speeds of up to 600mm per second. The multicolor capabilities of the IFS unlock some pretty amazing multicolored and multi-material prints. It also provides features like intelligent filament backup, which can help you make the most of every roll of filament. As always, the amount of filament wasted during purge is pretty substantial with these types of single hot-end printers. But even then, the 85X had some pretty good defaults for purge amounts. The unboxing and assembly experience was top-notch, with the printer assembled and fully calibrated in 20 minutes. The main drawback to me is the slightly smaller than average print volume. 220mm in the X, Y, and Z is good enough for most prints, but I did run into height issues with a few of my normal test prints. I think FlashForge did an incredible job with the 85X. I was consistently impressed by it. The FlashForge 85X is on sale for $399 US dollars at the time of recording. There are a few bundles which can save you a few dollars. The bundle with the enclosure kit is $438, saving $11. And the camera bundle is $431, saving about $9. 
but you can buy those kits separately from Flash Forge. At $399, the 85X is a very enticing 4-color 3D printer. It's the least expensive multicolored Core XY printer currently on the market. The closest competitor, the Anycubic Cobra S1, is about $50 more expensive. And other similar printers from Bamboo Labs and Kidi are hundreds of dollars more expensive. Elegoo's Centuri Carbon might be close in price, but Elegoo hasn't released their multicolored system yet, so it can't quite compare. So with the 85X, you are getting a great value for the feature set. The main drawback is the slightly smaller print volume of 220 millimeters cubed. But if that's not a deal breaker, and you are looking for multicolored and multi-material printing at a reasonable cost, then I could highly recommend the Flash Forge 85X 3D printer. So thank you all for watching my review of the Flash Forge 85X 3D printer. What was your favorite feature? What features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. I have plenty of upcoming projects and reviews, so be sure to subscribe to Hoffman Engineering so you don't miss out on those. And if you are still looking for your next 3D printer, check out my recent review of the Anycubic Cobra 3 V2. It's another entry-level multicolored 3D printer that might just be the printer you are looking for. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.